Testing, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Hello, everybody. 12, that's the number of holidays you can have every month and still keep your weight off once you reach the ideal weight range. Hello, everybody. We are going to get started in just a moment. Good morning, Marsha. Good to have Marsha with us. Hello, y'all. Hello, hey Chris. Hey everybody, hello. All right, we're gonna get started. It is 10.34 a.m. Eastern Standard Time and I am your host, I always wanna be a talk show host. I am your host, Travis Martin, founder of Shibola, down 100 plus pounds, keeping it off for many years, living the Shibola lifestyle, have come off all prescription medications. And yes, I was on many, and in addition to those, I was prescribed others that I just refused to take. It's not saying that you should you, you, to refuse to do what your doctor says. You should do what your doctor says. Teresa likes my shirt. We got a saying around here. We borrowed part of it from Martha Washington. Busy as a bee, cheerful as a cricket, steady as a clock, standing on the rock. This is our Wednesday shirt. It's Tuesday, but this is our Wednesday shirt. Once you get an entire month of perfect Wednesdays with no holiday Wednesdays, you unlock the right to own this shirt. So, yeah, we have a lot of fun around here. Ministry, first and foremost, is the way. Helping people lose weight. Stop being enslaved to the diet devil and his devices. Hey, everybody. Hey, the great Sally Clock is with us. I want you all to do this before we even get started today. I know your heart. Look, a lot of y'all, I, I know a lot of y'all are like me. Like you say this a lot. You'll say, especially the, the humble folks, they'll say, uh, I'm going to do this if the Lord is willing. They'll say, if tomorrow comes, I'm going to do better because, you know, only God knows. You know, we are a people that value our creator. And we know that God says live and we live, die and we die. So everything that we say, we feel like we've got to attach a, a suffix to it and say, if God will, if God will. I got news for you. God will. You know that. My father, my, my earthly father, Jack Martin, my earthly dad, y'all might take this wrong uh, and think he was being harsh, but Look, I did at the time, but looking back on it, I don't think it's harsh at all. I went through this phase as a young adult where I would, every time I'd see dad, I, I would, I love you, dad. Bye, dad. I love you. I love you. I love you. Dad's never been one to do that. And But I got in a, a, a phase of saying, I love you. I love you. And it's good. Don't get me wrong. That's good. Most people should do that. But I, I got in a phase, and I guess it kind of irritated him a little bit. And he said, son, I know that you love me. You don't have to. He said, when you tell me every time that you love me, I begin to wonder if you really do. He said, because I just know that you love me, and you should know that I love you. You know, it's not the things that comes out of our mouth. It's, it's how we treat each other. That we that you, Do you know I'm there for you, son? Yeah. Then I love you. you we don't have to to say it over and over and over and over and it always as I got older I started looking on that and I get it now back then it hurt my little young feelings but dad you know what he meant was look you never have to doubt that I love you I don't doubt that you love me you're my son and you know with everything that we say as a people at least I do I have I feel like I have to qualify it so that God hears it like I'll say things like I'll, I'll say things like, well, at Shibboleth, we're going to be successful in 2023 if God, we, if God will allow. I'll say things like that. It, you, I think it can drive my wife crazy. I'll say, I'll say, Sasha, God's going to bless us this year. I really believe it. If we'll do our best and if God will, God will bless it. You know, I'll say that a lot. And, it, you know, but what I realize is that I don't have to say that. Now, what people will say, if I say anything positive, this is coming around to a weight loss lesson. If I say anything positive and I don't say if God will, if it's, if it's God's will, then people will correct me. 
Do y'all ever have that? They'll say, well, it, only if God will. And, and the thing is, see, God knows my heart. God knows in my heart. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's fine for me to say if God will, if God will allow it. But here's the thing. God is for us. And God knows our heart and God knows why we're doing the things that we do. We might have to speak it out loud to prove it to people. You know, if I come in here and I say, I'm a fantastic weight loss coach. If you'll follow me, you're going to be successful. If you'll do, you know, it, you'll have somebody go now, Travis, you know where it comes from, right? You know where it comes from. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It comes from the Lord. And that's why I'm really careful to say, I know there's no good thing in me. I don't have the ability to decide today that I'm going to do right and lose weight. I don't. I don't. God can give me wisdom and God can take it away. Did y'all know that? You know, all, a lot of the bad decisions I've made, I look back and I'm like, wow. You know, it's like wisdom was removed from me for a season so that I might go through some things that might sculpt it. Because I'm the clay and God is the potter. And, you know, here today I stand and sometimes I'll get people will correct me. So everything I say, I say, if the Lord will, y'all know it's all in the Lord. And see, the thing about that, the Lord knows my heart. I might have to prove to y'all that I'm trying to follow after God. You might have to prove to you, your co-workers or your family by saying, you know, I love God all the time out loud, and that's fine. But I got news for us all. God already knows the intent of our heart. We don't have to say a word. That's why I believe Jesus said, don't pray like the hypocrites do. The hypocrites love to go out into the streets and they love to pray out loud and pray publicly so that people might see them and hear them. But your father in heaven already knows what you have need of. But if you must pray out loud, just pray like this, our father which art in heaven. You see, God is for us, even when we ain't necessarily for God. Don't throw stones. But I'm just saying, we're the, we're the ones that's unstable. God is stable. God is unmovable. You know, I've had kids in the past say, Daddy, I hate you. Have y'all ever had a kid say that? I hate you. They're mad in the moment. I hate you, Daddy. I hate you. You're so mean. Have y'all ever had a kid do that? Did you stop loving them because they hated you? Because they said they hated you. Did you stop loving them? No, no. I didn't waver a bit when I've had two of them over time. So I hate you. I've had two of them. My love didn't waver a bit. Not a not an inkling. I would have still been for them there for them in the next 30 seconds because I know I'm their father. And us, us being uh, you know, just earthly but fleshly beings contending with the flesh every day. Just think about that. Just, our God, if if we know, as parents know how to give good gifts, how much more does our Father in heaven? So I come today to say there's good news. God knows your heart today. Do you want to change? Are you trying to change? Or here's the danger. Do you feel like maybe you've been um, turned over to a reprobate mind? What do I mean by that? You know, you can resist the grace of God for so long that you become calloused. That can happen with weight loss. Like if you, if you know that you should do better and you know that you should live up to your highest and best potential and stop letting food enslave you over time, if you just don't care and you don't have a heart to, to change anything, and, and, you know, maybe, maybe you think there's nothing wrong with, with gluttonous behavior. That's between you and the Lord. But let's say that you're, a, you're one who knows that you're not living your best. You're not even trying. And then you'll try for a day or two and just quit because it's not convenient for you or whatnot. You can get to a place where you're turned over to a reprobate mind, in an unprincipled person's mind, where the wisdom's gone. You know, you, you won't even know what hits you. It won't be like you're sitting around wanting to lose weight. It won't be like that. It won't be like you're sitting around wanting to do it and just can't make yourself do it. No, this is the next level. It's where you don't even care anymore. Have y'all ever met anybody that's enslaved to food, alcohol, or drugs, and they just got to a place where they didn't care anymore? Anybody? 
And no, as much as you wanted to help them, there was nothing that you could do. You wanted to help them. You give them pep talks. You try to help them, but they just continued down the, the path of self-destruction with alcohol, drugs, or, or some other vice. It happens with food too. It does. It happens with food too. That's why it's so important for you to follow the daily principles for success and get in the habit of them. The daily disciplines is so important. The Shibola secrets that shouldn't be a secret. Drink your water. Go through fast track, everybody. You got to go through fast track. Go through the lap system. Boom. Let us install. Let us install like the matrix. I need some of you to sit down in my chair in the Shibola chair. Has anybody ever seen the matrix? Have y'all, anybody? Y'all ever seen it? So I need some of you in, in the spirit to sit down in my chair and yeah, I'm gonna be like Morpheus because I believe you're the one. Y'all follow me? I believe y'all are the one. You don't. You may not believe you're the one. Neo didn't believe he was the one, right? It took some convincing. It took other people's faith in Neo for Neo to realize that he was the one. At first, when the Oracle talked to Neo and said, she said, well, here's what how the one will feel. And she said, are you the one? And she knew that he was, but it's up to him to know that he's the one. And, and he said, he looked, he's like, he's still perplexed. And he's like, I'm not the one, am I? And she said, I guess not. But he was until you realize you're the one. This is your hero journey. Here's another problem with most of my, I didn't even know I was going to do this. I was going to talk about spark and I was going to talk about meat and, and rice cauliflower. But, and that's probably what you want to hear. But can I go with what the spirits laid on my heart now? Are y'all okay with that? Because we got all the, we got the meal plans. We got the food. We got all that stuff. Here's, here, not everybody. There's a few, there's a few of those uh, domineering types in, in, our, in our group. But for the most part, see, like attracts like. Like attracts like. Our little program, for the most part, has attracted people like me. Now stay with me on that for just a minute. Not everybody. We've got somebody, I can't mention their name because we're, we're, in, we're in a non-disclosure agreement with them uh, that, that we, we have helped with their nutrition that uh, has a, a show in Las Vegas. And, you know, they were amazed when they said, you know, I'm, I want to pay for your program. I've heard about it. I was amazed. I'm sitting here looking at them in Zoom and they're, they're in their, their big mansion and they're in their bathrobes taking a lesson from me. And, and you know what they said? They, they said, well, you know, how much is this going to charge? And at the time we were charging $50. How much is it going to cost? And I, at the time I said $50. And they went a month or and I said, no, $50. And they were like, no, you can't. They said, you can't be doing all of this for $50. And I said, well, I, I want to. I'm, I'm not going to treat you any different than I treat anybody else. And, and by, besides, if you pay more, I'll think that I have to treat you better than I treat my other people, and I'm not going to do that either. And they were so sweet about it. And, you know, I've talked to them probably once a year for the last three years, and we'll do a little update. And, and, and see, I serve some of those people, but they're not like me, or at least at this point in their life, they're not like me. Let me explain that. They're very self-confident people. I'm not naturally self-confident. I attract people that are like me. I'm not saying you don't have a better skill set or a worse skill set, more experience, less experience, but I'm saying in the soul, in the spirit. And a lot of you don't think that you're the one. You think that you were put here and you were to a degree to be a servant, to be a support system. Am I right? You're, you're the one that nurtures. You're the one that forgives. You're the one that is the glue that keeps everybody together. You're the peacemaker. You know, and oftentimes because you're so, so rock solid in your giving and support of everybody, they even take you for granted. They don't mean to, but they, but they do. 
because they're used to you being there. And then when you can't be there for them, God forbid you get sick for a few days. They act like the world is coming to an end. You know, they're like, why, you know, why are you, you know, I get this a lot. I get this from my uh, friends and acquaintances or whatever from Shibola, you know, that I, that I talked to that for, for whatever reason, you know, they, we, we connected at some level and, and they'll say, what's wrong with you today? If I'm down for a minute, I mean, if I'm not, if I'm not going, losing weight is it? He's that. Woo! I can whip a bear with a switch today, buddy. If I'm not doing that all the time and not just feeding and filling their love tank, the minute I go, how you doing today, Travis? And I go, I'm doing all right. Got some got some challenges today. Sorry. Hang on. What's the matter with you? You're not up today. What's the matter with you? You know, you and I, we're all human and we're nurturers and we're supporters. Y'all are here because. We've got a lot in common. Now, I know we have a lot not in common, but the core here, we have in common. And here's how you feel. Tell me if I'm wrong. Not all of you, about 80% of you. About 80% of you. You feel, you in, in a large part of your life, you felt unacknowledged and invisible. Yes? You felt like you're there more for people than they are for you, but you still show up anyway. You look in the mirror and rarely are you proud of yourself. Rarely do you feel that you measure up, that you're beautiful enough, that you're smart enough, that you're disciplined enough. We be brother and sister, but I've got good news for you. You're the one. You, you are, not they, you're the one. And you haven't awakened to that fact yet. You're the one. Everybody else is just an avatar and character in your journey. Travis, this is getting kooky. No, Bible says, Bible said in my house, in my father's house, there are many mansions. If you do some research, you'll find out it ain't a house he's talking about. It's dimensions. In your dimension right now that you're in, I'm just playing a part in your life. You're the hero. Do you hear me? I'm not the hero. You're treating me like I'm the hero, but I'm just your Morpheus. And I'm saying, you're the one. You don't realize it today, but I'm not the Rocky in the story. You're Rocky in the story. I'm just Mickey. What are we waiting for? It's time, high time, that you awake from your sleep and slumber. If you read the Bible, if you read it in the, in, if you read it as it was written spiritually, you'll realize that the Bible is a love letter to you. Jesus don't ask who do all y'all say that I am? In the Bible, it's specific. It says, who do you say that I am? Because who you say that God is will determine who God says you are. How many of you have said that God is the, is the Christ? God is Jesus. God is the Holy Spirit. How many of you have done that? Then you're the one. You are the one. You are a member of that body. You are the one. So at what point do you get up on a Tuesday morning and you say, I realize today I'm the one. And the flesh is not the, the lust and desire of the flesh and of chips and pizza will not control me any longer. It's not going to do it anymore. My ritual of eating my Fruit Loops in the morning is over. My ritual of going to the Martins, getting me a big old greasy biscuit in the morning is over. I'm the one. I'm the one. And how does the one live? Now, you might come up with your own approach, or you could just take advantage of my 20 years of investment in learning all this stuff. And here's how the one would live as it relates to food. They drink their water. They would journal because they realized they're the one. 
And this life that they're living, they want to leave a record and a legacy behind in their journal. They're the captain of the ship, and a captain has a captain's log. They would eat in the right food combinations because they're wise to the fact that insulin is absolutely destroying their longevity. The amount of insulin running through their system is absolutely destroying their mitochondria because Travis, my Morpheus, my coach, has told me the one these things and I've researched if I didn't believe him and found out he's telling the truth. So I've got to eat in the right food combinations to control insulin and I will. It's that simple. I just will. No exceptions. My line is in the sand. I'm focused on what I can't have, not on what I can't have. I'm going to lock it down and rip, 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 rip off the knob, the fat burning knob. It's time. Will somebody shout with me? It's time. I'm a movie buff. I wish we could all watch movies together. I keep trying to pull that together and I can never get anybody to have movie night with me. You know, I, I, I get so lonesome sometimes. You, what are you saying, Travis? You're married to Sasha? This may not be a nutrition lesson. Y'all talk about your love for each other, but y'all don't understand. I'm lonesome. Sasha's always working. I'm always working. And it's like there are times I would love to like, okay, I'm here in Florida. Y'all are all over the U.S. Let's all watch a motivational movie tonight. Let's all sync up at the same time. See, you're my family. You are my family because we're like-minded in a lot of areas, not all areas. Let's don't let the areas we're not like-minded divide us. Like I know I've got Bible friends here that read your Bible probably more than I read mine, and you're literalist, and I'm not a literalist. I, you know, I've been saying that more because I get scolded a lot from, from where I came from, the churches that I came from, I still love and adore, but sometimes I'll post something, Jettabug, I'll post something, and somebody will private message me, well, I'm, I'm a straying from the faith. And it's like, no, I, I'm just not a literalist. I, I believe the Bible was spiritually written. It has to be spiritually discerned. So, I, you know, I, I read it and then I pray about it, meditate over it. And I look at it like it is, not a, it is a word to me, right? And it's based upon my experiences, where I'm at in life. And the Holy Spirit will take it, take the ingredients and then blend it up and help me get something out of it. That's just how I see it, right? So, you know, it, it, here we are, and we need each other. We need each other. You need a support system because you're the one. Neo wouldn't have been too strong in that movie, The Matrix. Rocky wouldn't have been too good without the support system. You need a support system. You need to learn, and then you need to... You need to stay involved with a group that's like-minded who understands controlling insulin and food combinations and focusing on what you can have and not whining and crying about what you can't have. You've got goals. you got to save the world, baby. That's right, you. You've got to save the planet. You know, if you don't do it, who's going to do it? When are you going to rise up and believe? And the, listen, the worst condition you're in, right, the, 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 the worse off you are right now from a physical standpoint, the more glory, the more of God's glory that can be manifested through you. You know, if God takes somebody that's already pretty strong and improves them by a percent, you know, that's great, but maybe nobody takes notice. But if you take somebody that's on seven prescription medications in a wheelchair, and the next thing you know, six months later, they're standing up out of that wheelchair and they're down and off prescription medications. Glory to God! Praise God! Something good has happened. You talk about going to the church and hearing preaching. What kind of preaching is that? When somebody gets up out of a wheelchair and then the next thing you know, they on, they 70 years old on TikTok dancing. <laughs> you know, tell me that that ain't a testimony. I think words are cheap. Oh, well done is better than well said. So we, we learn these things together in Fast Track. We, the food combinations that powerfully control insulin. And then the portions. We're disciplined. It's not like every meal is going to be our last meal. 
you're going to get to eat again in just a few hours. I think the Neos in here, you take your smartphone. I lost my phone. You take your smartphone and you set it, you eat. Let's say that we had a Shabbat, some Shabbat approved pancakes this morning. And then we ate the pancakes and then we hit our timer. And we're like, you know, see that? Six hours. It's going to take me two hours to burn off them pancakes I just ate. And then I'm getting back over into fat burning for four hours. And it's me against the clock. And I'm not eating again until the buzzer sounds because I'm Neo. Or maybe you want to be Trinity. <laughs> Trinity's pretty good, too. I like Trinity. So you've got to get fired up about your life. You're letting this world and the monotony, the, maybe you have monotony in your life and, you know, a, a job that the same job and you really aren't fond of it. You're thankful for it because it puts food on the table, but it isn't the spice of life that you need. And you're getting one, maybe two, maybe no vacations a year. Come on. Let's throw a party in our mind and in our heart. Let's go to a different dimension today. Again, after all, the Bible says, Jesus said, in my Father's house are many mansions. Let's, let's call that dimensions. Dimensions of love and joy and peace and patience and gentleness and goodness and meekness and temperance and faith. I hate to hear somebody say, I can't do that. They are trapped. They are in a prison. Their mind has become, their, their thoughts that their mind is, is toying with because it's not all their thoughts. A lot of those thoughts in their mind come from the enemy. It's absolutely imprisoned them. Travis, how do I break free? How do I break through? Just move to a new dimension in here. What's in here? You can go out and look up into the night sky and look as far as you can see, and you see endlessness. There's so much vastness. Do you know there's more vastness in the human mind than what we look up into the night sky and can see. You can move to a different, you just got to change the channel. You're, you're, you're operating on the, the channel that's, that you're on a station that's a can't do station. Then you turn it to the excuse station. Then you turn it to the station that says there's no good news and the world's going to hell in a handbasket and there's no help for our kids. How about just click, 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 turn it over to the station of love. How about click, 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 turn it over to the station of joy and peace and faith and discipline. Just turn the dial today. Move over into a new dimension. Don't worry about tomorrow. If there's a tomorrow, we'll change that dial again and get in the right dimension. But you got to do it. You're, not, you're just going to chase your tail with your weight loss efforts if you're, if you're up and down, up and down, up and down, you're just going to be chasing your tail. There's going to be times that you get up and you lit most of the time you don't want to get up. It's, it's a weird thing. We all are. We're weird. We don't want to die. I'm not saying that we're not ready to die. I'm not saying that we don't all believe that there's dying grace. I'm not saying that, but none of us here really want to die right now. In fact, if, if we got a bad diagnosis, we'd fight it and probably try to cling to life. None of us want to die, but yet, oddly, weirdly, when the alarm clock goes off, most people don't want to get up. Oddly, most people don't want to go to work. Oddly, most people don't want to do a lot of things, but you got to do it, so you do it. Your weight loss efforts is like this. There's going to be days you don't want to do it, but you do it anyway because of the fruit that it produces. Let me ask you this. Has anybody ever planted a garden? And it was hard to plant it. It was hard to fertilize it. It was hard to pull the weeds up around it. It was hard to tend to it and, and caretake it. But once it started producing fruits and vegetables and you got to eat them, was the labor worth it? Was it satisfying? It's very satisfactory, isn't it, to, to labor and, and work towards something. See, the world has got all you neos. The world's got all you neos to just working. 
You're enslaved. You're just working, but you never get any any fruit. You never get any pleasure. You never get to eat the good that you're that you're producing. See, here's what I love about losing weight. If you put the effort in and you delay your gratification, you will soon get to enjoy the fruits of your labor. And that fruit is heightened self-esteem, heightened self-reliance, heightened positivity, heightened pleasure in all areas. When will you make the decision to be the one? This is a hero's journey. And again, I go back, I digress to the first part of this lesson. So many of you in your humbleness and in your humility, you can't say, I'm the one. This is my story and I'm the hero of my journey. Now, unfortunately, I've known people who were bad people and come into a lot of money and they became worse people. I've never seen money make a bad person, a better person. I've also seen money corrupt good people, but soon they humble themselves and come back to God. God giveth, but God also take away. But I've also seen good people come into money and become better people. Weight loss works just that way. I've seen really bad, rotten people that I met that asked for my help, and I'm like, I don't even know if I want to help them. Travis, you ought not be that way. I'm just telling the truth. I mean, it's like there's a, the Holy Spirit letting me know, don't deal with this one. No good deed is going to go unpunished with this one, but I do it anyway. It's who I am. And then as I help them and they start losing weight, they become a worse person. I'm not talking about judgment. I'm defining worse as they just become meaner and nastier, more entitled. Thankfully, our group, there's very few of those people. And in fact, they don't stay long. Most of the people here are good people. And you know what losing weight's going to do? It's going to make you a better person. So let today be the day of your salvation in this area of your life. All right, I'm going to get to Q&A. Any questions, hit the Q&A button, smash that, put your question, and I'll answer it while I drink my spark. Marsha, how many days should we do intermittent fasting? I've, I've done four days for 16 hours. That's an easy one. If you'll do it every single day, every day. Every day, if your doctor approves, every day you should have a 16-hour fast. You don't have to. With Shibola, we've made a way so that you don't have to. But if you're talking about a 16-hour fast every day. Now, prolonged fasting, you need to discuss that with your physician. When I say prolonged, I mean prolonged no-calorie fasting, where you're fasting 24 hours at a time. You need to discuss that with your physician. But a 16-hour fast, every day would be ideal. Every day for most people. Amanda, I crave chocolate so bad in the evenings. What are your recommendations of what I could have to not mess up my perfect day? Nighttime snacks were my downfall before, and it's been a struggle. Would an approved shake or something help? Yeah, you could do a chocolate shake as a snack. I like the Power Crunch chocolate bars. Tastes like a Nestle Crunch bar. I also like peanut butter and company chocolate, uh, the Chocolate Dreams peanut butter on some of the Fiber Gourmet biscotti. So that's got that's good. That's really good. I also like the Double Chocolate Mighty Muffin. And then I add some sugar-free chocolate chips. That's delicious, too. Hope that helps. You still have to eat it within the confines of the Bulletproof Shield. You get up to three eating episodes a day. If you have to have a fourth, you can do so, but it needs to be a snack or a freebie. Any other questions? New one. You just addressed this somewhat by encouraging us to stay strong and set a timer after you eat. Because of fasting in the morning, I sometimes try to have just two eating episodes. That's me too. But then I end up supplementing with a freebie or snack too soon after the second. 
because of hunger. Would I better off from weight loss standpoint stick with three correctly spaced out eating episodes until my stomach shrinks with the smaller portions? It's sometimes hard to last four to six hours. Yeah, grazing's not good, um, but thankfully with Shibboleth, we are allowed to do that during those times of mental weakness. It's really not hunger. It's if you're eating two and three eating episodes a day you and you have excess fat, you're really not hungry. It's a mental thing. We don't like to feel that emptiness. We like to have that. We're addicted to feeling something in our gut. I actually think that it's more pleasurable to have an empty gut once you get used to it. But, you know, it's, it, it's, it's just there's a thousand ways to do Shibboleth. I, so it's even hard to answer it because you're asking what's better, right? So I think the best way, which is not the best way for everybody, I think the best way for a human would be to eat, and I can't do it or I don't do it, would be to eat one robust, balanced meal per day. I do. I really do. I think that would be the best way for every human being to eat. One robust, not processed food, but like dense nutrition. Uh, one robust meal each day. I think that would be the ideal way for human health. But many of us, we've done so much damage, that's not practical for us because we're addicted to sugar, addicted to starch, our physicality is, our metabolisms are, and uh, therefore we get these cravings. So, you know, it's like if we make it too hard from the beginning, people just leave. So with Shibboleth, it's what you will do is better than what you want or can't do. So I suggest three eating episodes a day. You're struggling, it sounds like. You're trying to do two eating episodes a day, and then you end up, sounds like maybe binging or hog troughing it because you feel like you're starving to death. So I would just try to work towards three eating episodes a day that are approved. And if you have to have that fourth habit, you'll lose a lot less weight than your peers over the short term. But if that's more manageable to you and you can do it for the long term, you'll lose just as much as your peer group. And you'll enjoy the journey more because you're getting to eat more and that's part of the challenge right now. You're used to eating more. Now you've cut that side of you off and you're trying to have just two eating episodes a day and then you get hungry and you give in and it's too late. With Shibboleth, you can have three eating episodes a day. And then if you get into a point where you're mentally, feeling mentally weak or compromised, you can have that, that additional eating episode. You could have two, two snacks and a meal each day. You could have one snack and two meals. You could have three meals. If you have mentally, mentally weak moments, you can have that, that next one. It takes some time for you to find your personal lane. What works for me would not have worked. What works for me today would not work for Travis 20 years ago. I just would not have been able to eat one and two meals a day without giving up. I could have done it, but psychologically, it would have been too much and I would have quit. That's why we offer so much variety, so many different eating episodes each day. So I don't know how to answer that because it's not a matter of what's better. What's best in, for most humans, one robust, balanced meal a day and lots of exercise, supplementation. But is it the best when most people won't or can't do that? No. The best is the, is the lane that you get in and you enjoy that allows you to reach your goals. Now, if you get in a lane where you're, you're having – you know, three, three meals a day, a snack a day and freebies all day and you're not losing weight, then we need to back off on that. I think a lot of the people, uh, I, I, I think that they're, they have that Neo moment and they're like, I'm ready to lose weight. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. And they don't realize, I wish I had my bell here to hit. This is a good one. They don't realize that today, you want all this gone and you're willing to do anything, but your state of mind's gonna change with the next phone call you get from somebody that pisses you off. <laughs> your state of mind is gonna change in 15 minutes. When you make that decision, by the next day, something done happened to pee in your Cheerios and your state of mind has changed. Sorry, it's real talk. So it's better when you start 
And the Bible teaches us this too, to count the full cost of what we're trying to accomplish. When you start on your weight loss and wellness journey, it's important not to just assess where you are mentally in that moment, but to assess real life and, and how you're going to be three months from now, six months from now, a year from now. So whatever approach you start with, it needs to be one that you can do through the good times and the bad times, through the crises and through the lack of crises. Does that make sense, everybody? Do y'all see the point I'm trying to inarticulately make? Oh, y'all are saying stuff and my thing wasn't scrolling. Hold on. Yeah, but for me, I like doing the following. I, I, my ideal day is get up, have a happy juice or a spark, and then at lunch have some kettle and fire bone broth or something like, and then have a nice, robust, well-balanced Shibboleth-approved meal for dinner. That's, that's my druthers. What tier would pork skins be on a lion day? Uh, probably a tier two, Charles. You're allowed to have them. They, they're approved for all parts of our program except for the vegan part. 200 calories of pork skins is a snack. Up to, it's just too many, but if you're pushing the boundaries up to 400 calories of pork skins could be a meal even. It's just protein and fat. My calendar is showing a green check, even though I'm having a perfect day and haven't had a holiday. Just refresh it. Just hit, click your refresh button. I'm assuming what you're saying is you've had more than two green checks in a row. By the third one, it turns into fire. After you refresh it, if you're still having problems, then uh, get with somebody, get with one of our people. And, We'll figure out why your check is not turning into fire. I want to see fire on my calendar. Fire! Fire means I'm burning the bootie. Any other questions? Bye, Jettabug. Jettabug's jetting. Anybody else on this last day of February? Why can't I stick to my diet or lifestyle? Because you don't have a big enough why. That's all it is. Big enough why. You haven't identified the pain that you're not willing to live with anymore. And you haven't identified the pleasure that you must live in from now on. And right now, food is more important to you than your goals because your goals and dreams aren't big enough or either you don't believe that you can achieve them. Um, every day I would be in the same boat if I did not check in with my written and visual goals. I would be in the same state of mind. And until you are willing to do that intellectual work of defining your why, the pain that you're trying to avoid, the pleasure you're trying to get to, and you must have it, and it's more important to you than food, inanimate, soulless object that has enslaved you, uh, you will never be successful. I wouldn't either. It, it's not, I, I'm just not special enough a person to get up every day and not check in with my goals and check in with my pain points and check in with the, you know, the, the pleasure points. Like one of the things I read this morning was where I wrote, uh, my life is as a vapor, you know, enjoy each day, enjoy every, every moment, check out of negativity, check into positivity. You know, if I didn't do that, I would, I would get, I would get taken away from my goals too. Food is good. It's an instant pleasure. It, and, and for good people, what the world calls good people. I don't even like to use that. You know, that's how Adam and Eve got in trouble. They started acknowledging the difference between good and evil. You know, that's what got rid of them, right? They ate from the tree of what? Knowledge of good and evil. Once we start saying this is good and this is evil, we've usually got it wrong too. That's why the older I get, the more careful I am about my biases because I realize that most of the things that I say are good are probably evil. And most of the things I say are evil are probably good. 
I just, I'm not God. That's probably the only thing that I've learned in my 52 years is that there is a God and I'm not him. So, you know, but I'm using that as a way of explaining when I say good. You know, when I say something's good or something's bad, and, and that's what this amounts to is you've said food is good, discipline's bad. And, you know, you don't have a lot of pleasure in your life. Good people, again, I use that term loosely, good people, they, most of the time they don't turn to drugs and alcohol. They don't turn, turn to other misbe- things that society thinks is misbehavior. So they turn to the only thing that they can get some pleasure out of, that being food. And what I wish people would do is realize, yeah, you're getting some instant pleasure. You're getting some mouth pleasure, seconds of mouth pleasure. But what are you giving up for that? What are you giving up? You've given up a lot of freedom. Every time you eat when you're not supposed to, if you're already unhealthy and overweight, every time it's like you're, you are giving somebody, you're giving, you're giving away $10 and getting a dollar back. Ain't real smart, is it? I mean, that's literally what you're doing. When it's not time to eat and you eat or you eat the wrong things that spike insulin and you're already overweight, I I get it. They're giving you a dollar, but you're giving them 10 back. You're sacrificing so much all because you won't wait for that timer to sound when it's actually the real time to eat. I'm just telling it like it is. Travis, the picture you sent with the text looks delicious. What is it? It was an old picture that I found. Um, Somebody told me what recipe that was in the library. Somebody may know, uh, but it's definitely what I call my burritos. But it was made in a crock pot and then put in like a a wrap. Uh, I'll try to find out if Tammy doesn't know, Eric. It's a delicious one. There's many delicious Shibola. That was like from 2015, one that. A friend of ours made a great photo. Obviously, I didn't do that photography, but uh, she did Allison. Allison made that Shibola approved recipe and took a picture. I said, that looks delicious. I want to lick the screen. So I posted it. But it's definitely approved. I think it's one of, think it's one of the crock pot recipes or, or the stuff that was inside the wrap. Looks delicious. Anybody else before we go today? Any other questions that will keep you moving forward? Anything that you're discouraged over that we can assist with and point you in the right direction on? Um. I am missing the shirt message. Tammy, could you fill me in? Hey, everybody. So the shirt message is people are asking how to earn their daily shirts. Mm. So I thought that would be a good discussion because tomorrow starts March 1st. So if everyone is in line and know how to do it, we can start working on that this month. Yeah, at, thanks for that. Um, yes, we have the Busy as a Bee shirt, uh, Cheerful as a Cricket, Steady as a Clock, the one I have on, Standing on the Rock, and then there's a shirt for every day of the week. So the idea was to give people just a little extra motivation to have perfect days all month. So if you have perfect days the entire month of March on Monday, you unlock the Busy as a Bee badge and shirt. Uh, same thing for Tuesday, Cheerful as a Cricket. You can actually go to see those. Hold on one second. I'll take us there. And I did add that link to the chat so everyone can click on it as well. Aha, thank you. Yeah, so I logged in here and I hit Apparel Store. And in your journal, once you mark, say, four or March, all perfect Wednesdays in March, you would unlock 
the T-shirt that corresponds with that day, like Sunday's Feeling the Healing, Tuesday, Cheerful as a Cricket. So you can see them all here. Like you can see in this account that I'm in, I'm in, I have many accounts. These are for testing. These are locked. So once I, for example, if I want to unlock the pink one, I have to lose 10% of my body weight and have that logged in my journal. If I want to unlock the Friday shirt, work hard, play hard. So I do, I have all Fridays and see, they get harder to unlock them all because the weekends are harder for most people. But that, that's how it works. Saturday, hide and watch me. You know, don't think I can do Shibboleth on a Saturday, hide and watch me. I'm going to have four perfect Saturdays in March. That's how you unlock those. We don't sell them to just anybody. You, you have to earn them. I'm reevaluating re my why today, and I want to say I'm worth it. I'm worth changing for. just feels good to put it out there. I'm doing this for me. Absolutely, you're worth it because you're the one. There's nothing wrong with you feeling like the one. Travis is playing a part in your story. You're living in a dimension. Travis isn't the special one. You're the special one. You have to remember that. If you got a kind heart, you don't have to worry about getting arrogant with that. You're not going to do that. In fact, God wants you to know you're the one. You, you don't believe anything I'm saying. Okay, let me put it this way. Uh, if you don't believe that. Did, would Jesus have died for just you? I know Jesus died for the world, but would Jesus have died for just you? Then you're the one. Better watch coming at me with that judgment stuff. You get your Bible out, I'll get mine out. <laughs> Anybody else? Amen, amen. You deserve to live a lean and healthy life full of adventure and love, and you deserve that. You deserve it. But we have to be content with it or without it. All right, Teresa, good to hear that. Doctor said, get back to it. I like it. Good to have you back. Anybody else before we go? Got 30 seconds. Or forever hold your peace. God bless you, team. You're welcome, April. You're welcome. Thank you, Tammy. Thank you, Joni. If our hearts and minds are clear, then we'll be adjourned. Please watch the Fast Track videos and go through those laps. Learn the program the right way, and then let's build off of that foundation and start personalizing your program and approach. Bye, everybody. Talk to you soon.